part number two of Exeter. My GoPro died. Her uh, SD card's full, supposedly. But uh, we're over here at Exeter Mercantile, aka Ace. You can see they're very tall windows. They're about 14 feet up. And down here below, you can see the new or the different style of uh, brickwork for the newer on top. You can see across the street over here. Ooh. They kept their doors. Nice. And they love putting the people they dominated on all their brands that they sell for uh, or they're overcharging on. Yo, cool. Yeah, I'm sure they would have approved that, but they weren't alive to do anything about it. Convert or die. Nobody converted willingly. And I was like, there's our, all your murderers right there that moved in. Oh, look, we're friendly people. None of them touched the crop, and yet they're taking all the credit. Small vent hole. In that prior building, they blocked up all the doors, and they kept these. That's a tall door right there. Those windows. Again, 12 to 13 feet up. Old door, old windows all boxed up. See, they got a window right there. there was a window where the air conditioner's at now. Window above that door, but you can see that door goes down below the concrete. Left the original uh, ceramic insulators up there that are brown before they started making them clear. My dog's friendly. Huh. Say hi. <laughs> he always starts off like that. Yeah. He's a big puss. Says hi guys. How's it going? Tails wagging. He, he yep, wants to have fun. Still wagging. <laughs> Say bye, bub. Hey, have a good one, man. You too. Enjoy. I will. That's what they said. 1911? Let's go down here and see what this says. Let's go through Old Town Exeter on the wall. Dirt roads, 1911. So that was after the reset. You can see heat with electricity. Telephone poles in 1911. There you go, I'll stand right here. 
Here's a story of uh, Exeter. Exeter was once a grassy plain settled by the Yokut Native Americans, primarily along the banks of the Kauai River and its tributaries. Um, where our hat was uh, basically uh, along the banks of the Lake Tulare, or Tulare, that uh, was one of the biggest uh, lakes in North America. Uh, in 1800, so let's go back. They were hunters and gatherers living on the area of abundant elk, antelope, deer, fish. Americans of European descent came with, came to the area in the 1850s and 60s to farm wheat. The Southern Pacific Railroad carved its way through the eastern San Joaquin Valley in the 1880s to transport enormous wheat crops. So that tells you that the railroad was here before they said in 1888 earlier, right there. Tra oh, only to transport enormous wheat crops. Communities were developed about every 10 miles or so to provide loading platforms, maintenance, and access to the water for the steam locomotives. D.W. Parkhurst, Park seems to be everywhere in last name of these white devils over here. And uh, John Fireball bought land where the town of Exeter is now located. He didn't buy anything, he was given it. Mr. Fireball's uncle had already used their land name for a town that was on the west side of the valley. So Mr. Parkhurst named, it, named the town after his home of Exeter, England. Oh, how nice of him. Claim a new name over a land you guys murdered everybody. Oh, you discovered it. Look at that guy. He looks so honest. As irrigation and deep wells were established, grapes and citrus began replacing wheat as a major crops. For a number of years, Exeter was known as the emperor grape capital of the world. Later, it became known as the naval orange capital. Oh, how convenient. Regardless of crop or title, the diversity of crops and related industries has made Exeter one of the finest farming areas in the western United States. So that lets you know that uh, the Indians didn't need anybody outside them and they didn't like that. They were self-reliant. That's not good for banks or a monetary system. The rich ag agriculture heritage is reflected in the many murals located on the walls of the downtown buildings. The Exeter Centennial is a milestone in the history of this thriving community where a sense of pride and caring services. Let's look at this white devil that was uh, given everything over here. Indians showed them how to do all this stuff and they don't they don't give them any credit No credit Old bank sure you want to walk over. Let's walk this way E pluribus unum out of one many. Clear of us. Here's a very old building. You can see some of the wood poking out of it right there for the trusses. Wood and brick were used extensively and then I facaded over the wood because they couldn't make some joints. Wood's easier to carve. They used whatever tools they had on hand. And they were crafty as much as possible. Used to be an old service door. Howdy, I'll keep you out of the video. Do you know how old that building is right there, that, that Exeter Mercantile? About 104 years. 104? 
Oof. It's crazy because I've been walking in there and I see the old uh, under uh, the floor heating systems and stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Same owner. Same owner? Yeah. That's awesome. The same family. That's awesome they kept the building around. Because uh, the group. Full basement, two thirds of it's full basement. Upstairs quarters. It's abandoned. There used to be a couple of orders off the upstairs. Ah. A long time ago. When you hide out. There's access to the upstairs from the from Pine Street. There's actually two addresses. 258, whatever address the upstairs is. It's an old one. Cool stuff. Thank you. Oh yeah, one other question is, uh, was there an electric train before, uh, uh, was there an electric train before steam out here? I, that I do not know. I've seen if I say electric, uh, railroad, someone went through here, uh, on some yeah, of the murals. I don't know what was here. That's a little before even my time. <laughs> I never have done that much history. Chris Brewer at the bookstore over here on the corner, he would know. Chris Brew, cool. He's a local historian. Awesome. I'd love to hear know all that stuff. Because this is all YouTube stuff for uh, just like your, your grandparents or parents. Not a lot of, not, not everybody was up to date on history. They were yeah. new to the area or. But yeah, he would know all about it. At the bookstore on the corner of uh, E Street and Pine, the e north, northeast corner. It's a flower shop and a bookstore. Cool. Uh, he'll, he'll have all the skinny on what was local. Thank you. And he's probably he's probably some books too. Of local stuff. Yeah, because I want to find out about the yokels and stuff because I don't hear a lot about those either. Yeah. And the the Gill family is pretty big around here too. Many years ago, they used to have about 8,000, 9,000 head of cattle. They were pretty big cattle ranchers. And they had nine western states and cattle. You could drive for a ride for six days and still be on their property. Local right here, the kids were still around. So they all know all those hillsides and stuff out there? They did, yeah. Gill, crazy. Badger Gill Estates up there, That's that was Gill property. Tori Gill, she's gone now, but we built the first house up there. I did the cabinets in it. That was about 40 some odd years ago. So that's where most of the uh, this area's wealth is up there in our Badger Hill. Yeah, there's a lot of down on the floor. A lot of, a lot of local ranchers are, have pretty good sized estates down on the floor, but more of the new money's up there. Lawyers, doctors. Yeah. My doctor's up there. <laughs> he's well off because he's got a hell of a view. Yeah, it's a little breezy up there, but it, it is nice. I kind of like looking down towards Yoko Valley now. I'd be looking for it. Yeah, it's peaceful out there. Yeah, either way, it's pretty nice. I'm going to go check out Mr. Bookstore. Yeah, he'll, he'll be able to help you. Have a good day. And they have, like I said, there's, he's written, there's, they publish different books about local history and stuff, so. Good stuff. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right, see you. Mama.